In this episode, I'm going to give you the truth about additives right here on the Tequila Hombre coming up next. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Tequila Hombre where today I'm going to give you the truth about additives. Now, additives have become the boogeyman in the tequila world and is it rightfully justified? That's one of the things we're going to look at today. Now, for those of you that don't know me uh, or haven't uh, followed me very often, one of the things you're going to find is I'm very honest about the information I provide. I originally bought into the whole additives thing as a new tequila person. And um, one of the things that I'm really well known for, and it triggers a lot of people, pisses a lot of people off, but it's okay, is a lot of the experts that are on social media, that self-proclaimed experts, um, I don't listen to them. I don't listen to them. Instead, I go to the master distillers and the people in the industry and I talk to them and I get information straight from the people that are making this tequila. And one of the things I've done over the last couple of years, when I go to Mexico, I go several times a year, visit with the master distillers, visit with the distilleries, work on projects with them. One of the things they do is I ask them, I say, hey, what do you think about additives? So some of the information I've gathered from them, I'll include in this particular presentation. This is gonna be a long informational video, so make sure you sit back, relax, enjoy a good tequila, and understand what we're talking about here in regards to additives. Now, is additives rightfully, should it be the boogeyman? Well, then we're gonna dive into that and answer those questions for you here in just a minute. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into talking about additives. All right, so first let's talk about what the definition of additive is. The definition of additive is a substance added to something in small quantities to improve or preserve it. So are additives allowed to be uh, added to tequila? Absolutely they are. According to the norma, the rules that govern the production of tequila, there are two types of additives that are allowed to be added to tequila to improve the flavor profile and preserve the, the tequila itself. So. The additives that are allowed to be added are either mellowing additives or flavoring additives. So let's dive into the rules about mellowing additives and what mellowing additives are. The four mellowing additives are caramel, oak extract, simple syrup, and glycerin. These additives are allowed to be added to tequila at a rate of 1% per mellowing additives based on the volume of tequila made. So there can be a total of 4% of these mellowing additives added if they are all four used. Otherwise, it's 1% per mellowing additive. So let's break down and take a look at these mellowing additives and see whether they're really as bad as people make them out to be. The most used mellowing additive, according to people that I've talked to, is glycerin or vegetable glycerin. Now, glycerin is a natural byproduct of fermentation and distillation. Guess what happens in the production of tequila? Fermentation and distillation. All right, so let's take a look at glycerin uh, as a whole here. Glycerin is made from a, or, or is composed of a compound called glycerol. Now, glycerin is a type of carb carbohydrate called a sugar alcohol or polyol. It is uh, slightly more calories than per gram than sugar and is 60, 70% as sweet. So it's not quite as sweet as sugar, but it can be used as a sweetener. Glycerin occurs naturally in fermented foods and beverages, including beer, honey, vinegar, wine, and wine vinegar. It's also com commercially produced from fats and oils uh, or through the fermentation of yeast, sugar, or starch. Glycerin is used in a variety of food and drink products, including various beverages, nutrition and energy bars, cake icings, soft candies, chewing gums, condiments, creams, diet foods, dried fruits, fondants, fudge and marshmallows, and glycerin safety has been confirmed by multiple global health authorities, including the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. So there's nothing wrong with consuming glycerin. All right, so while glycerol and glycerin are uh, in during fermentation and go into the still for distillation, it has a much higher evaporation temperature than ethanol does. So typically the glycerol or glycerin is left in the still during distillation. Sometimes though, it has been found that 
glycerol or glycerin can attach itself inside the still and and as ethanol is evaporated uh, it is then dissolved into ethanol and can drip out of the still if they don't do a good job of cleaning stills but typically you don't find glycerin in the distillate when it comes out of the still but it is a natural product it won't hurt you so adding it doesn't really adversely affect you unless you have an allergy to sugar alcohol but typically glycerin is not a bad thing um, but it is added to add smoothness and to add mouthfeel to a distilled spirit and um, nothing wrong with that at all but since it's not coming out of the still it's very easy to detect whether glycerin has been added and what they typically do the crt does if they're looking to see whether they've exceeded the one percent is they do something similar to what i did for my additive test and that they'll fill it up in a, in a test tube they weigh the total weight of the test tube and then they evaporate out the alcohol so the only thing left is the glycerin and other things and then they'll weigh that to see what um, weight the glycerin is and then that will tell them what percentage of the total volume of glycerin has been added. So glycerin is easy to detect in, in tequila. And that's one of the things the CRT does during their tests in the laboratory. All right. So the other, the other uh, calming or mellowing additives that are used are, are, or that are allowed are caramel, which is just basically heated sugar. <clears throat> oak extract, which in the rules do determine that it has to be a, a natural oak extract, which, I mean, come on. And then a uh, simple syrup, which is basically a mixture of, of water and sugar. And you don't typically find a simple syrup being used um, just because uh, you have to worry about the crystallization of sugar and it shows itself too easily. <clears throat> um, people have mentioned aspartame before. Aspartame, from my knowledge, has not been been used in adding to tequila as a sweetener as it has a shelf life and expiration date and typically uh, can go bad. So people don't want to add a chemical into the tequila that if it sits on the shelf for a period of time, it will go bad. And if you haven't experienced that, if you've had Diet Coke that's been sitting out uh, in your garage for a little bit and you go to drink it and the aspartame's gone bad, it's a pretty foul taste. So I've yet to find any distilleries that use aspartame there may be one out there or something that uses it, but it wouldn't be any distillery that I would ever recommend um, getting tequila from. Now, just so everybody knows, none of these additives are allowed to be used in Blancos. You can only use them in Hovens, Repos, Añejos, and Extra Añejos, Aged Spirits. Um, so you typically won't find them used in, um, in Blancos. Now, we're going to get into this interesting part of this. And that is going to be the flavoring additive. So, but first, let's talk a little bit about aging tequila and wood. Now, I've seen a comment where uh, the CRT said that 90%, 90 plus percent of the tequila uh, that's made today has additives. A lot of people freaked out about that. But when you think about it, the fact that just by aging tequila and wood, you're actually adding additives. Wood aging what's the purpose of wood aging tequila right you're you're improving the flavor profile and you're um mellowing it out as well so um yeah you're adding additives by simply putting it in a barrel and aging it so let's take a look at barrel aging let's take a look at some of the compounds and what's involved and then we'll tie that into the flavoring part here afterwards okay so by putting tequila into wooden barrels you can do different things to the tequila by selecting different type of barrels. Now, what you'll find is that by wood aging, not only can you improve the flavor, but you can also improve the mouthfeel based on the amount of tannins in the wood that are extracted during the aging process. Now, wood also can calm the tequila down uh, if the tequila is hot and it also add different flavorings to it uh, from the natural wood compounds that are involved. And it's actually the toast or char of the wood that actually determines the flavor profile that you can get from the selected barrels that you have. Or in, in some cases with tequila, the kind of alcohol that was aged in it previously, because a lot of alcohol brands will use previously use bourbon barrels, cognac barrels, rum barrels, uh, or other liquor or wine barrels as well to help flavor their tequila. 
Now to illustrate what I'm talking about, you'll see on the screen a chart of different char levels and the flavor profiles you could expect from the barrels. This, these are brand new barrels, brand new wood. This is from a cooperage. So these are the different kind of flavor profiles you can expect based on the char level or the toast level of the wood that's being used in making the barrel. So if you look at some of the flavor profiles in here, there's leather and woody for a heavy char, there are medium char, there's earth, coconut, spice, nutty, vanilla. Uh, for a medium, there's vanilla, coffee, toffee, spice. Uh, for a light char, there's spicy cinnamon, clove, nutmeg. All of these are uh, flavor notes that, of course, we've detected in our aged spirits when doing reviews and when you're drinking Reposados, Añejos, uh, Extra Añejos, as well as Hovens, which, which is a mixture of an aged spirit with a Blanco, typically. All right, so one of the main compounds in wood that really adds the, to the flavor profile of tequila is one that's known as vanillin. Vanillin is an organic compound with the molecular formula of C8H8O3, which means it's eight carbons, eight hydrogens, and three oxygen molecules form together to create the molecular structure of vanillin. Vanillin is found naturally in plants uh, and wood, and it's a natural organic compound and therefore is present in wood for aging. All right, so plant-based vanillin occurs in many plants and is a natural protective sy protection system. The protection comes from a form of inherent antimicrobial properties, which takes effect when the plants are attached by, attacked by fungi, yeast, or bacteria, or insects. And many have tasted um, vanillin from wood, which um, when drinking wine matured in oak barrels. Vanilla from the oak in the barrels is extracted into the wine and gives it its round but distinct vanilla flavor. The vanilla taste in the wine intensifies based on how fresh the wood of the barrel is and how long the wine is stored in the barrel. Same exact thing for tequila. Wood is a significant source of plant-based vanillin with rice and cloves being the other two. Now the main application area for plant-based vanillin is food production. It fills the gap between the limited production of vanilla and the massive demand for plant-based alternatives. As the vanilla plant is typically the largest source of vanilla, but because of uh, how, how rare it is to find vanilla plants and how, um, how it's expensive, they have found that they can extract vanillin and use the pulp of wood as a source of vanillin to create vanilla flavorings. You see where we're going here? Now, one of the interesting things that I found about vanillin is the structure of the molecule. The structure of the molecule is actually similar to that of flavor molecules found in other spices. Now, this is what really kind of got me thinking a little bit, because if you look at what this says here, it says it shows a lot of similarities with eugenol and cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamaldehyde, which is the two molecules that are key players in the flavors of cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg. So when we talk about the flavors of cooked agave, right? The typical flavors that we talk about are cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg. This leads me to believe that there are vanillin and other vanillin type compounds found inside the agave plant naturally as well. So just because you taste vanilla in a Blanco doesn't mean there's additives. It could be natural vanillin that's actually in the agave plant itself. So you're probably wondering, okay, Ombre, what about the caramel and chocolate notes that you get from wood as well? Well, those come from different compounds within the wood. For example, the caramel is comes from the caramelization when they toast the wood. It's the uh, sugars of the hemi hemicellulose present in wood. It's when they get caramelized, they produce that chocolate uh, flavoring as well as caramel flavoring. So it comes from other compounds within the wood, but vanillin is the one that gives us the strong vanilla compound. And of course, Vanillin with the caramelization of the sugars in the hemicellulose together, because actually vanilla is a flavor compound that is present in uh, caramel as well. So both of those combined really produce a nice caramelized flavor uh, when we talk about vanilla and caramel notes. And then the chocolate comes more from the caramelization of the sugars within the wood. So that explains where a lot of the flavor notes come from, from aging in wood. Now let's take a look at the next set of additives, 
which are the flavoring additives. One of the main flavoring additives used in tequila as an additive is vanilla, vanilla flavoring. And guess what the main compound in vanilla flavoring is? Vanillin. And guess what the main source of vanillin is for vanilla flavoring right now? Well, the least expensive source to use for vanillin is wood pulp. So yeah, they extract vanillin from wood pulp to create vanilla flavoring. Now, vanilla flavoring that's typically used in tequila is suspended in alcohol and, and ethanol and is consists of vanillin, which makes it untraceable for anybody looking for it in a lab because it's already in there from being in the wood because, of course, it has to be aged in order to add vanilla, um, vanilla flavoring to it. So you cannot detect whether vanilla flavoring has been added to it because it's in there already and it comes from the wood, so you can't say that they added it. You can't know that they added it unless you were there when they uh, took it out of the barrels and bottled it and seen that they did not add any additives. So that's one of the issues with flavoring additives is they cannot be detected. So can anybody straight out say that something is 100% additive free? Absolutely not. What they do is they look for the the mellowing additives and see if they find mellowing additives and then say based on that that it's additive free but you cannot 100 say that a tequila is 100 additive free because a lot of the com compounds that are found in the flavoring uh, additives are actually naturally in the tequila before and this kind of adds a little bit to it as well you can see here this is the caramel flavoring note used uh, that um, uses vanillin as the um, compound in it. With this, with it says with a top caramel note. Um, so here, vanillin is also being used, which of course would be in the tequila already from um, being aged in wood. One of the things that really motivated me in doing this video and um, really kind of putting this information out there is on my trips to Mexico, which I go a couple few times a year. Um, when I'm sitting with the master distillers and most of the ones that I deal with, actually all the ones I deal with really don't do uh, anything with additives. But I asked them, I said, so tell me, what are your feelings about additives and tequila? And, and the majority of them turned around to me and they go, you know, hombre, in all honesty, um, it doesn't bother us. We don't mind it. We understand why it's, be why it's being used. We don't use it ourselves because we don't need to, but we don't see it as being a bad thing. Uh, it does help people. Uh, get t uh, some tequilas. It helps some of the distilleries here make money and and keep their livelihood and feed their families because um, they you know the American palate itself likes sweet, uh, so it has a purpose. So uh, another concern people have addressed is that well wh why did they hide it if it's no big deal? Um, they don't hide it. A lot of times they just don't feel it's necessary to disclose it, and the reason being is because. The stuff they're putting in there is already in there in most cases anyway. So what does it matter if they're adding a little more vanilla to their tequila or not? Um, the way you can tell basically is by flavor profile. If it's extra sweet and extra caramelly and, van and vanilla um, and you don't like it, don't buy it. The chances are it's probably got additives in it. Is there any way to know for sure? No. But if it's got more vanilla than you like or more caramel than you like or it tastes like cupcakes, whatever, then don't buy it buy the stuff that doesn't that you know is additive free so don't let additives be a boogeyman to you don't let it frighten you you want to know if a tequila has additives <clears throat> the best ways to do it is to buy it and taste it if it tastes overly sweet and you don't like it then you can pretty much assume it's got additives if you want to avoid buying it first and trying it well then you can ask somebody like myself who uh has tasted thousands of tequilas and can give you a good idea whether i think they're using additives or not it may not be a hundred percent correct but I can get a good idea on whether they're using additives or not and let you know. But in most cases, you know, if, if they are using a little bit of additives, it's not going to hurt you. If you like the flavor, enjoy it. Drink it because typically those compounds are in the tequila anyways. Hope you like this information I shared with you today. If you do, click the thumbs up and give me a like. If you're new to the channel, bienvenido, welcome. If you like information that's factual, if you want to know what's going on in the tequila world so you can make great decisions yourself is also... Want to know what tequilas to buy and what not to buy? Make sure you subscribe by clicking the subscribe button right there and the notification bell next to it. And until next time, like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila. So keep following my reviews and listening to my informational videos and you'll have the power to select some of the best tequilas you've ever had. Salute. Bye, guys.